everybody. This week we're going to be painting some conkers. We're into November now, so oh, oh, are we? I can't remember. <laughs> um, anyway, October, November. <laughs> so uh, you probably will have seen or found some conkers out collecting with your grandchildren or children or even on your own like I do. Um, conkers are a huge part of autumn for me. Um, throughout my childhood we went collecting conkers and we'd have conker games and oh, it was just lovely. It's a great time of year you get wrapped up and go out and collect baskets of the things. I know some people use them as deterrents for spiders in uh, sheds and things like that so you know they can be quite useful as well. Um, so I've sent you this picture. It's a really lovely picture. It's a photograph. So we're going to do a, a representation of that in watercolour. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it inspires you to go out and collect some conkers and maybe have a conquer match with somebody that you know. All right. Hope you're all well and safe. Um, still no news about the community centre uh, starting classes back again. So we'll just carry on until we do get some. All right. Stay safe. Okay, how to mix browns if you don't have a brown in your set or if you want to vary the browns in your set. So I've got a little table set out here. I've got cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, gamboge and naples yellow. If you haven't got all of these yellows, don't worry. Just use the basics, which are these two, cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. And then I've got ultramarine plus crimson cobalt blue plus crimson and cerulean blue plus crimson and then repeat ultramarine plus crimson uh sorry here i've got ultramarine plus cadmium red cobalt blue plus cadmium red cerulean plus cadmium red ultramarine plus crimson cobalt blue plus crimson and cerulean with crimson okay so i'm just going to take my cadmium yellow and put a bit on here and then I'm going to mix a bit of ultramarine with cerulean red like that and then I'm going to add that to the yellow and you should get this colour okay so I'm just going to repeat with the lemon. Now the lemon is your more citrusy yellow. And I'm going to use the ultramarine and crimson mix again. Um, cadmium red, sorry, I keep saying crimson. I'm just going to mix up a lot of this so that I can use it later. You end up with like a Ultramarine and cerulean red gives you a sort of dirty purple colour. So I'll mix that in with the yellow. So this is lemon yellow. There's a plane going over. So you can see the difference in tone there is quite significant. Yellow ochre. So now make sure you clean your brushes well in between, especially with the yellows, um, because you don't want to dirty your yellow. So this is yellow ochre mixed with ultramarine and cadmium red. Nice brown that actually. Now I've got a gamboge, so I'm going to carry on mixing with that colour. Um, you might not have a gamboge, but this is just to show you. If you've got any other kind of yellows in your set, then um, have a go. I've put Naples yellow down here and I don't have that. So there we go. So that has given you a series of browns there, even just with those basic colours. Okay, so you just repeat the exercise um, with the other colours. And what I'll do is I'll stop the film here and I'll put it on time lapse so this speeds up a bit.
So there you have it, a range of browns that we may use or may not use in our conkers. You'll see that the ranges are very sort of varied, uh, but they're very clean. So basically blue, yellow, red will always make a brown. Um, don't use blacks, don't use other colours. Um, they just make them duller. Okay, so all we need to do for the conkers is to vary the amount of colour that we have in these mixes. So if we were to say, for example, take, um, actually that's not a bad colour, cadmium yellow with cobalt blue and crimson. So we've got cadmium yellow, um, cadmium yellow, cobalt blue and a bit of crimson. and just add a little bit more red in it then you'll see that you get your sort of very red redder browns add a touch more yellow into it let's just put a touch more yellow into it and then you're getting even more towards the conquer tone um, so it might be that we stick, let's add a bit more yellow, see what happens. So I'm just adding more yellow here as I go down. And you can see that the, the tones start changing quite significantly. So that might be the range that we use in our colour mixes when we come to do our conkers. But just experiment with these colours, it's really fun uh, to discover how many different tones you can get out of things. All right. Okay, so here we go with the conkers. I'm going to paint this picture here. I hope you've downloaded it and um, printed it off. We're also going to refer back to our um, brown colour mixing chart here and we're going to use these range of uh, browns. So uh, cobalt blue, crimson, uh, sorry, cobalt blue with cadmium red and yellow, cadmium yellow. OK, you can use other tones. It's up to you, really. See what you feel. OK, so I've, I've just roughly drawn my two conkers out onto a piece of watercolour paper. I, I just want to show you this that I got. I got this book from um, Tiger. We have one in Carmarthen. Um, and it was very cheap. I think it was only two or three pounds or something like that for 20 sheets of 30 gram watercolour paper. Um, the texture on it is not great, so we'll see how it turns out. The reason why I'm doing it onto this paper is to make a point, really. Um, there's sort of lots of little dimples in this surface, and because the conkers are smooth, this ne is not necessarily the best paper to choose. However, I just want to show you so you can understand that choice of paper is really important. So I do have in my collection um, some what they call smooth watercolour paper, which is quite difficult to get hold of. Most watercolour paper that you get uh, in shops is sort of what you call a rough texture or a medium rough texture. Um, normal watercolour paper, that's what you're familiar with, like this that I've done the um, colour mixing on. It's just got a rough sort of speckly texture. The cheaper the watercolour paper, it seems the worse the texture. So I've had watercolour paper from the works, which has got a sort of lined texture going across it. And for landscapes and stuff like that, it's really great. But for portraits, it's really not good at all. So please think about what you're doing when you choose your watercolour paper what you're going to use it for you know if you're going to sort of specialise in in portraiture then you need to buy yourself some smooth watercolour paper any kind of botanical painting things like that so just have a think about it you'll see the results today I know how this is going to turn out um, but I just wanted to show you really um, so that you can learn uh, how to choose your watercolour paper okay so first things first cadmium yellow we're using watercolour today. I've just got a medium sized round brush here um, and I've got quite a lot of cadmium yellow. I'm going to mix 
a sort of middle uh, tone to cover the, the, the majority of the body of this conker. So I said what we're going to use is cobalt blue, which I've got here. And so as soon as you put that in, obviously you're going to get a green. And then a little bit of cadmium red. So just a, a touch of cadmium red. And you're going to get that sort of chestnutty colour. Try it out on a piece of paper. So if you've got a scrap, try it. And just check that it's the tone that you want it to be. Now, I want that to be a touch redder. So I'm going to put an extra dot. Now, my cadmium red is very strong because I get it straight out of the tube. It's in a pan here, but I refill my pans with tube paint. So again, just check the colour. Is it right? Always do this before you put it on your paper. Now, that's quite thick. So I'm just going to add some water into it. You add it appropriate to your paint. If you're taking it straight out of a pan, then it's likely you won't need too much um, water in it, unlike mine, which has come out of a tube. I know this is confusing because I'm using pans here, but I, like I said, I refill my pans with tube paint. And we're just going to put an undercoat down on these conkers. So I'm just using a nice round brush, nice thin paint just to, and can you see now what I mean by the texture of this paper? So it's sort of, because it's dimpled, the watercolour is falling into those dimples and sort of forming dots. However, you may have this paper and you may be happy with it or you just want to use it anyway. So just use it and get on with it. You can always use it for a variety of projects specific for certain things like landscapes or whatever, or even just experimentation. I often say buy yourself a, a book of cheap watercolour paper just to experiment with because watercolour paper is not cheap um, and you know for mucking about a bit it's uh, it can be quite expensive so undercoat those conkers like that and then we're going to put while we're waiting for that to dry wash your brush off and we're going to just mix a pale now the tops of conkers are generally a sort of little bit whitey in whitey white <laughs> in tone. So I'm just going to put a small amount of yellow ochre and I'm just going to pick up a bit of blue um, just to knock it back ever so slightly. I'm talking about a min minuscule amount because, you know, white doesn't really exist. There'll always be some marks. So Normally when you use white in watercolour, it's the white of the paper showing through. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the marks that are on that top of the conker and I'm leaving some of the white paper exposed. Can you see like that? All right, and we'll work into that later on. Okay, so... This conker is a bit confusing because it seems like we've got two sources of light. I think that the, they have been photographed in a studio, so they may have had electric lighting pointing at them, which is why we've got double highlights on the conker on the right-hand side. And the shadows are sort of towards us and onto the left-hand side of the conker. So they're a bit confusing, but, you know, let's muddle along. So if you've got any paint left, what you can do is just add a little bit of extra red to that colour. This is cadmium red we're talking about. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to lift off a highlight. So once this is dry, get some water and just lightly, don't press too hard because you will 
lift the undercoat off if you're not careful. Just lightly wet the whole surface again and take this colour that you've mixed ready and drop it onto that surface. What this will do, it'll give you two things. One, it'll give you a nice blended, blurry result to your picture, but it will also allow you to lift off any colour that you need to lift off. Now, take some extra red, mix it in, and we're going to put some extra red around this section here. The left hand side of this conker is very red and almost orange in places so if you wanted to you could put some orange in there as well if you've got orange take some orange and you can put a flash of orange in there like this oops let me just get some a bit thicker on my on my brush. There we go. Nice flash of orange around that far right hand side of the conker. It comes all the way down here, and also looks to be going around that sort of highlight area, and then it goes red. So we've got a little bit of extra red in there. Just the cadmium red will be fine. And then it starts going into brown. And unfortunately, this print makes it look like it's blue, but it's not. It's just where the, the ink in the printer has gone a little bit mad. So all you need to do is into that color mix that you've mixed up is just add a little bit more. Oops, I meant to add it into the mix. In, into that mix of cadmium red and uh, cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. Add a bit more blue into it so it darkens it up and put that. Now make sure that you've got a nice smooth edge coming around that now there's a shadow on that side it's quite heavy um, and that's because there is likely to be a shadow being projected from the conker the other conker in the picture so we need this to be quite dark and we're still wet so we can still work into this oh that's my glass jar <laughs> um, you can use other browns if you've got them. In your set, if you've got a conquer brown already, um, burnt sienna or something like that, you can use your burnt umber around here. But I just wanted to show you how to mix your browns without having brown in your set. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber actually no i'm going to use the ultramarine blue i'm just going to put a dot over in that corner there just to darken up that side a bit more and then around where the conquer is almost touching the other one i'm just going to put in a few more darker sections If you've got a little pool of, um, I don't know if I've got any tissue paper actually, I don't think I have. If you've got collections of paint at the bottom of your work, take a bit of tissue and just soak it up. I'm just using a, an old sock here. <laughs> but paper towel or loo roll is the best thing that you can use in that in that instance right so let's lift off these now you can do this with a brush clean and um wipe wipe it off on a paper towel or a piece of sock and you're just going to lift off 
this highlight here. Wipe off your brush each time you make a mark. So now I've made a mark, my brush is now full. So I'm just going to wipe it off. If I put that there, you can see what I'm doing. Wipe it off and just lift and work in a curve. Can you see I'm working in the curve like that? All right, same here. If you need to clean your brush off, clean it off. And we're just going to lift off a circular form here. Keep repeating it until it's as bright as you want it to be. Okay. Now, can you see what I mean by everything falling into these dotty bits? Okay, so we're going to leave that one and we're going to do the other one the same way. I'll put it on time lock, lapse. I've, put it, I've, got, I've got a mark there. Um, and all you need to do is let it dry off and then come back in and darken it up again if you want it to be darker. Okay, so I'm just going to finish these two conkers on time lapse. Okay, so I did the undercoat, I re-wet it and then I put more colour on top. So I've just basically thickened up the colour. And you just do that by adding more paint to your colour mixes. So if you want it to be redder, add more red. You know, you can go in around this. Um, you can work directly with the red colour and just go in around these structures with a red like I just did there and if you don't want hard edges to form then just take a, a semi dry brush and just soften the edges around the edge like that so that then brings a little bit of extra red to that area in the same way you can add a bit of orange under here just to extra orange, darks, purples. If you see purples in the picture, put purples in. You've got to work with the colours that you've got. Um, very sort of simple colour on the very top of the conker. And just keep working into it until you're happy. You will find that the quality of your paper will make a huge difference with this. So just be aware of that. Okay. And now we've got our string. So I'm just going to use whatever excess colour I've got here. And I've just added a bit of burnt umber and a bit of Payne's Grey. If you haven't got Payne's Grey, you can use black, but add a little tiny bit of um, blue into it. That's all Payne's Grey is, is uh, black with blue in it to make a, a grey tone. So you're not looking for a very sort of, the only problem with black um, straight out of the pan is that it tends to be a little bit flat. So just be aware of that. So this is for the rope. And the tips of the rope are silver. So if you just take the same color, move it over a bit and add some blue into that mix it will give you a slightly different grey to the one you've just used there and that will give you a nice sort of silver grey colour to put on this tip which is I, I assume it's a pair of laces and so obviously the lace tips have these metallic ends just fill it in in grey to begin with 
and then we'll remove a highlight off of it. Just using a small detailed brush here, I'm just going to carry on with the rest of the knot, which is at the bottom of the conker. So we're just working what is called wet on dry here. This is using wet paint on dry paper, whereas the conker we used uh, wet on dry and then we use wet on wet. That's when you put the water down first and um, you drop the colour into it. That's wet on wet. So I'm turning my paper because I know that it's easier to paint a straight line going from left to right than it is up and down. So just there. Okay, this is completely dry here on the top of the conker. Don't paint these strings in until it's completely dry, otherwise you'll get paint running into your conker. You don't want that. And use a thin brush for this. Don't try using a a big brush because you'll just run into trouble and it's not until you turn it back the right way that you realize that you've gone wonky or whatever but it helps if you draw it out Ooh, sorry just knocked that again so you can see now that that really makes a huge difference to the composition in the same way as the, sh the shadows on the conquer there would be a shadow on the underside of so either take, you can take some Payne's Grey or some blue and just put in, we don't want to make too much of a feature of these um, knots on the underside, but you know, they do need some detail so that we understand what they are. Oops, just went up into my conker there, but never mind. Bring the shadow along the top of the, and we're going to use the same pigment to just run a line down the bottom edge of both of those ends. We're going to put a circular end on here but we can't see the other one so we're just going to draw, try not to draw round these structures because it'll end up looking like a children's drawing. Just thin down the paint and put another stripe along the top and then I would wait for that to dry and look at it again and see if it needs an addition of a bit of extra colour. You don't really know until these things have dried whether they're going to work out or not. I'm just going to take some Payne's Grey and I'm going to put it around this bit here and this bit here. I'm going to put a little touch underneath, just on the underside of this knot. And when this is dry, you can put a shadow on there as well. Um, again, we don't know which direction these um, lights are coming from, so it might not be that you can see a shadow, but it's always nice to have one, so I'm going to put it on the left hand side of those structures. Just a nice straight shadow. Going all the way up to the top. I'm just going to put a nice mark at the bottom with a bit of Payne's Grey. And is there any shadow? I'm just going to put the suggestion of a light shadow just around the base, just because they can look a little bit like they're not connected if there's no shadow there. Just around the base, like that. 
Okay, I've seen one thing that I'd like to do, which is to just strengthen up the pigment. Can you see all of that now? Yeah, just about. I'm just going to strengthen up the pigment around the tops of these. So just in with a wet on dry bit of pigment just to make those colours a little bit stronger. Neating up any areas that you think need neatening up. I think those, now that that's dried, I can see that that needs a little bit more. I'm just going to put some blue in it though. So remember the grey with a bit of blue in. Because they are in the foreground and you don't you don't want them to be too simple that they don't make sense. Again, if you see different colours, then put them in. There's a little mark there. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to leave it though. Oops. No. Just finishing touches here. This is very reminiscent of conquer games that I used to play with my sister. And unfortunately, it's so sad nowadays that they can't do it in schools. It's been banned because it seemed to be too violent. I just don't get it. It's just stupid. Just seems to take all the joy out of things like autumn and such a shame but we can still play them at home might not be able to do it at school but you can do it in your own time <laughs> but it does make you feel like you need to go out and collect some conkers and have a game so maybe that's on the cards for later on Because we are in November and they should, well, you, it might be that you've already got conkers already. So just add little flecks of colour here and there if you feel it needs it, just to brighten it up a bit. Remember that this is a photograph, so, you know, you can really make it your own. This is where painting comes into, you know, its own, is the fact that you can really turn this image into something quite beautiful just by adding in your own additions of colour and texture and just lovely highlights and lowlights it you know the difference between painting and photography is huge you're at that the hand of the artist which is lovely personality comes out anything you don't like just soften it up with a bit of water okay I'm gonna let this dry now it might be that I add a little bit more I think in here now this Payne's grey is very very dull so I'm gonna add some purple purple <laughs> purple into it just to get it looking a little bit less matte in colour. This is the thing with um, watercolours is they, they tend to dry very matte in tone so to get the shiny results often means building up the colour a bit more um, because the thicker the pigment the more shiny it becomes so just be aware of that we've got another dark bit there haven't we really going up there that i missed this is the beauty of being able to stop and come back again so stop your work go and have a cup of tea and just come and reassess what you've done 
whether things need adding to or taking away. But I'm going to leave that at the moment because I know that the more I fiddle with this, I might ruin it. So just be patient and um, don't overwork it. All right. Um, the next time, well, not the next time, but in a minute, what I'll do is I'll show you once it's dried off and if I've made any alterations. Okay. Okay, here we are. I've just, well, we've just sort of come to the end of this. I was just going to let it dry off and do a few extra bits. I'll take a picture of it um, finished and so that you can download it and print it off and follow it if you need to. I hope you enjoyed the this week's masterclass. Um, I know it evoked a lot of memories for me, so I've really enjoyed painting the conkers. Um, there are other pictures online if you want to, you know, there's other conker pictures. If you really enjoyed doing it, or if you fancy doing a little bit more sort of botanical style. I mean, this is not far away from being botanical, um, but obviously more detail. Don't use this paper, use smooth paper. All right, this texture definitely didn't cause issues and I don't mind the, the sort of resulting texture um, but it's not ideal. Conkers are shiny. We love them because they're shiny and they're lovely to hold. So yeah, um, maybe a, a smooth texture or even a, a minimum texture watercolour paper would have been better to use. The other thing you can do is you can get a watercolour varnish or a medium um, that makes it shine um, so you can apply the medium over the top of the conkers to make them more and more shiny all right um, don't go out and buy any but i just wanted to let you know that that, that you could do that if you want to make your uh, pictures shine in places okay i'll put a note on about that on uh, on the notes okay see you again <laughs>